Not every story of sword ownership begins happily, but it doesn't mean it has to end in tragedy. Such is my story owning the Einar Viking sword. It was an age of adventure and savagery, a time when Vikings piled into longships and set out across the seas, raiding and settling the lands they found. But far more than just savage barbarians, these were also farmers, poets, traders, and explorers. Their stories can be found in the Vinland sagas, part of the Icelandic sagas, and evoking the legendary names of Einar and Eric the Red. The Vinland Sagas represent the most complete information about the Norse exploration of the Americas and paint a vivid portrait of a heroic world long lost and the amazing people who inhabited it. The Vinland Sagas originate from the same land as Njal and Gunnar. As told in Njal's saga, two friends whose family's unending feud would bring them to a violent end. As the tragedy of Njal's family unfolds, Grettir the Strong's strength and temper transform him into a hero, an outlaw, and a villain. Across the sea in England, Agil Skallagrimsson adds to his legend to become a warrior poet above all others. And, outlawed from his home in the wake of the feud, Eric the Red sails to the west to discover new lands, founding the doomed settlement known as Vinland. The Einar is inspired from the Vinland sagas and by Norse mythology. Aggregating all essential elements of Viking art and Norse mythology, the Einar exemplifies the peak of Viking culture. Luxuriously handcrafted from the finest materials, the Einar is a distinguished Viking sword you will be proud to own. Hand forged from 5160 high carbon steel and dual tempered, the Einar Viking sword is a rugged Viking weapon of choice well-balanced and skillfully engineered. The Einar sword blends the artistic ability of the Norse people with the central role of warfare in the Viking world. Here are the specifications of the Einar Viking sword. If I have to identify one thing that made me pay attention to this sword, it's the aesthetics. It looks absolutely gorgeous. Now at the time that I was looking for my first Viking sword, and this is my first Viking sword, I really wanted something that, again, like I very often do, captured the, the kind of the heritage and the tradition of the Viking people, and really had you know the spirit of who they were, not just as, as warriors and great craftsmen of weapons, but also very artistic people. And I felt this one suited that. It, it, it met all those qualities. But it also went a little bit above and beyond that in that it's not just a recreation of a historical piece, but rather it's a unique creation, a modern creation, that also blends their mythology. And I, I really think that that is an awesome thing. I think that this design is really awesome. It's, it's very worthy of the Viking people. Now, of course, their, their swords, the, the, art, the artistry that went into their swords, uh, it, historically, is just amazing. But I think that, that Dark Sword did a really good job in capturing that. Now, to be more specific, I'm going to start actually with the blade. Uh, they have a very nice blade. Clean lines, a nice broad fuller. They did a very, very nice job with it, especially with the sharpening because there's no real obvious edge bevels. Uh, and so you have, much like you have in an Albion sword, you have a nice ease and transition into a very nice sharp edge. Now, specific to uh, the hilt, as I'm going to be talking a lot about it, uh, the antique kind of uh, bronze uh, hilt components have this kind of intricate knotwork in it. Uh, nothing real specific that you can see some of its snakes eating the tail, etc. Um, but for the most part, it, it's it's a very complex and complicated mishmash actually of the knotwork. Uh, but it goes also into the handle, which is a carved oak wooden handle, and it works extremely well. It looks very nice. Uh, I I'm very very fond of the design. I think visually it holds up extremely well, and I don't think you could actually ask for more in a nice, beautiful Viking sword that isn't based on something that is historical, but is instead something that is 
uh, a unique recreation by a production company. So I think uh, Dark Sword Armory absolutely nailed it. They did a great design with this. They make it look really beautiful and it, it stands out. It stands out in a crowd of Viking swords in my opinion. Uh, so I think that is a great thing. They did a very good job with it and I uh, respect them highly for uh, kind of taking a risk as it were and designing their own thing, especially when it comes to the, the wooden handle that's carved because I think that that uh, Ha has a lot that could go wrong with it and be very complicated. Now, of course, that all comes with the price point that it falls under. Uh, but again, I think for the price, even aesthetically, this is just a beautiful sword. The functionality part of this review is going to be rather long because there is a story to be told here. I'm going to actually begin this part of the review uh, by talking about the research I did going into buying a Dark Sword Armory Viking Sword. Now, a lot of people have been requesting Dark Sword Armory swords as a review topic, and I don't own any, and I've never actually handled any, so I, I knew I'd have to go out and buy one. Um, so I started doing my research, and there's a couple of things that were highlighted in the research. The first is a lot of people are very, very unhappy with the, the weight and balance of most of Dark Sword Armory's offerings. So more specifically, that it's very blade heavy in a sword, and that things like long swords or arming swords just don't quite feel right. However, as much as that is said, many people say their Viking swords are very good uh, in terms of weight and balance. And, and I think that you can attribute some of that, that Viking swords have a little bit of expectation of being a little bit more blade heavy. Um, but apparently, Viking swords are what uh, Dark Sword Armory is really good at, uh, and they still have a lot of work to do on their other types of swords. So I knew I was going to get a Viking sword from them, so it was all right. Now the second thing that came about in doing my research on Dark Sword Armory is that a lot of people anecdotally have uh, concerns and issues with their quality control. And uh, you know that, that that's always a, a bit of a concern, but I figured, all right, you know, quality control is definitely a thing to be concerned about. But I'll go ahead and buy one and, and see what it is, you know, what it, what it's like. So I bought the Einar Viking sword. Now I was preparing to do a review on this sword about three and a half months ago at this point, and uh, in preparation of doing so, I had used it some really basic stuff, basic swinging around, feeling, you know, the weight, the balance, all that, uh, and then I prepared to do some cut tests for the review. So I set up the cameras and I got it all rolling and I began to cut tests. And it went well for a little while. In fact, here you go, here, here's some shots of uh, me doing the cut test and it performs actually superbly. I'll get back to that in a moment. But also, this happened. Now if there's one thing you never want to have happen when you're doing a cut test, or really handling any sharp sword ever, uh, is to have it fly apart like that. I'm very thankful that I didn't have anyone around uh, when I was doing the cut test. And I'm also very thankful that when it broke, it broke away from my cameras. Um, but that was extremely disappointing. Uh, it's, it's funny, you look at my face in, in that cut test and it's, it's just like I'm stunned. I don't even have an expression. I'm just like, oh, well, that happened. Now, it broke in such a way that I don't want to entirely fault Dark Sword Armory on it, uh, but in all transparency, I have to show you how it broke and what happened. So it actually broke right about here, a little bit up into the, uh, the hilt component here, or the cross guard, uh, and it just snapped, it just broke. And that can happen for a couple of reasons. One is uh, improper heat treating. Uh, another one is just a simple flaw in the metal. Um, and some of these things can be very hard to catch. Uh, but overall, that was very surprising and, and very disappointing. And uh, after it broke, um, I, I, I was like, okay, well, I got to get this return. This is uh, nearly an $800 sword that I just purchased. I need a replacement for it. Uh, and I, I haven't even used it for more than a week. And I haven't used it for anything more than cutting bottles. Now I purchased this sword through Cult of Athena, and uh, you know they're just a, a reseller. Um, but I went ahead and contacted Dark Sword Armory specifically about this sword, and just told them, "Hey, I bought this through Cult of Athena, 
but here's a picture of how it broke. Uh, and to their credit, and I think that if there's anything I will definitely credit Dark Sword on in this review, it's going to be their, their customer service because they were immediately replying and saying, oh no, so sorry this happened, that's a terrible thing, we're going to replace it for you, we're going to send you um, the, the shipping information and pay for the shipping and all you gotta do is box it up and ship it to us and we'll return it. And sure enough they did, here it is, it's whole, it's back to me. Uh, again, and I've <clears throat> since before this review gone out and swung it around a bit to make sure that's not going to fly apart again. Um, but that highlights the problem with Dark Sword Armory's quality control. And as bad as that may have been, they had great customer service and they wanted to do everything they could to fix what, what had broken. Um, and so I really want to commend them for that. I really want to highlight that because. Um, it doesn't have to just be a wholly negative thing. And I don't think this review is actually going to be wholly negative, but I do want to be very transparent that this did happen. Now, in terms of functionality, again, th this, is, this is a properly made sword, and let's be really clear, even a properly sword, uh, made sword can break. Well, this is a properly made sword. It, it's, it is well-tempered, it's got a nice edge on it, and it feels more or less comfortable in the hand. Now I will speak m now more to the actual just general functionality of the sword. Specifically my biggest gripe uh, is counter to uh, what I think of it in the aesthetics uh, is the handle. Um, it's not a very comfortable handle. The, the carved wood doesn't feel great. I'd almost rather wear a glove while using this sword. And on top of that, the design of the handle, the way it, it kind of tapers down uh, to the pommel piece, um, it doesn't. It feels like it wants to slip. And of course, the pommel piece helps to hold your hand in place. But I don't feel like I always have a great grip on it. Now, this isn't a very heavy sword for Viking sword. Uh, you know, it's about the standard weight, and it feels really good in the hand. Uh, one of the things I actually love about this sword is when you're swinging it around. Um, it actually you can hear it cutting the air. You can hear it making that kind of whistling sound. And uh, I, I, I really actually love that because you don't get that in a lot of uh, kind of broad blade swords. But this one just cuts the air and I really like that. Um, but uh, j just in terms of general usage, I think this is going to be you know, on par with any Viking sword out there that you can get that is functional and well made. Um, you know, its balance point, as you can see, is, is fairly far out from the cross guard. Again, a little bit blade heavy, but that's not to be unexpected. Uh, and overall, uh, it is actually pretty much a dream to handle, uh, assuming that doesn't turn into a nightmare with the blade falling apart. Uh, so one thing I would suggest uh, just overall in terms of buying a dark sword uh, uh, armory sword uh, is, again, Viking sword here, uh, but any of their swords, uh, I would actually put it up against a little bit of stress, not a lot, just a little bit to make sure that it doesn't break. Go out and do cut tests, do them safely, don't do them with people around. Of course, don't be cutting wood anyway or anything like that, but in cutting things like bottles or tatami mats or anything like that, um, make sure you do that some, make sure you do it safely, uh, and make sure you do it in such a way that you won't injure yourself, uh, just to make sure. And that's not really a bad suggestion for any sword out there. Again, I, I think that while there is a lot of anecdotal evidence to say that the quality control for Dark Sword is poor. Uh, they have apparently been working on it. A lot of people said that, that they've seen in, you know increase in their quality. Um, but take that with a grain of salt. And until they really begin to make as a standard uh, high quality weapons that won't fall apart, um, be very careful when you're first trying these out. Um, you know, I was very careful when I went back out with my brand new one. Uh, to make sure that it, it operated like I wanted it to. Now, overall, on the functionality side, forgetting for a moment the, the quality control issue and the, and the failure, this is actually a great Viking sword. I really like it. Um, I'm still very happy with this purchase, even after the issues, and that speaks a lot to uh, what Dark Sword Armory has done in making this Viking sword. And so, while I can't speak to a lot of other Dark Sword Armory uh, weapons and, and their designs and how they feel, at least for Viking swords, I think they know what they're doing. They're doing a good job. Uh, you know, it's just something that you have to be careful about. Do your research on the product, and you'll have to make the decision whether or not um, the kind of the risk of, of poor quality control is something that you're willing to go through for your sword. Um, but yeah, functionality, 
it's good. I, I really actually still very much like this sword. Now in concluding this review, I have spoken a lot about this sword and I've actually spoken about some of the issues I would normally cover in the conclusion section, specifically the quality control and the customer service aspects of Dark Sword as a company. I do want to note this also, uh, the one that I got came with scabbard so there's different package options you can buy with all dark sword armory weapons um, one of the things i found in doing research uh, was that someone had actually gotten the wrong scabbard for the einar viking sword specifically and it was a little bit too long uh, that was not the case for me this this scabbard is absolutely the right one it's really well constructed it's made of this really nice soft leather it really actually just feels great in the hand i, I actually just like to hold it um, but yeah, a very, very nice uh, scabbard that came with the package option I bought. It has some nice details on it, um, but this is a, a package deal. You're getting a good sword, you're getting an integrated sword belt with the scabbard, uh, so you, you're getting everything all at once. It's a one-stop shop for a Viking sword. Uh, and so, um, overall, uh, even after all the issues I've had with this specific sword and with the Dark Sword Armory experience, I'm actually still very happy with it. And I think that actually speaks uh, volumes about this sword and about Dark Sword Armory, that a bad thing can happen and it's not going to really actually ruin my opinion on their product or on them as a company. Um, and I'm still very happy with it. Now, because of the quality control issues and the concerns that that raises, um, that is going to knock some points off of my review score. Uh, if I hadn't have had uh, those those kind of problems. I probably would have rated this sword at a at a 4.0 very solidly. Maybe uh, just depending at the time, I may have even gone a little bit higher, like a 4.5. Unfortunately, because of quality control issues, I I will actually drop the score uh, rather significantly. It's still not saying it's a bad sword. In fact, uh, this is very much a a good sword for the purchase price as the package deal. Um, I can't speak highly enough of it uh, without, the, of course, the warnings, but I really do still love this sword. It's still one of the centerpieces of my collection, and I'm still very appreciative to Dark Sword Armory for creating such an interesting Viking sword. Uh, but th this is it. This is the Einar Viking Sword by Dark Sword Armory. I give it a 3.5 out of 5. Mm -hmm.